The FAWR is one of the most overlooked air forces of World War II, even though she faced the Soviets as well as Allied bombers and produced a number of aces. They flew German-supplied fighters, especially the Messerschmitt Bf 109, as well as their own designs. The most famous of these would be the Romanian fighter IAR-80 and the upgraded IAR-81. Built from what was learned with Romania's previous primary pursuit aircraft, the Polish-made PZL-24, she was only slightly slower than the Bf 109s and matched her in maneuverability, especially after the first 50 models' issues with the power plants had been solved. Once supplies began to flow, she was better armed than the 109, and while the first had only four or six 7.92mm machine guns, another 60 had four 7.92 guns augmented by a pair of 13.2mm machine guns, and they fired the anti-armor 13.2mm Tankunflieger shells. The 148 examples of the IAR-81C model had two 20mm Ikaria auto cannons and two lighter machine guns. These would be the standard examples from 1943 to the end of the war. From mid-43 on, the FAWR would allocate their best pilots and all their IAR-80s and 81s to homeland defense against the United States Army Air Forces. Now, the IAR-80 and 81 had already fought off attacks by Soviet fighters, as well as by Lockheed P-38 Lightnings, and it was a capable fighter, really the only significant aircraft produced by one of the tripartite pack satellite powers. She was liked by her pilots, reliable, and although underpowered in early examples, provided Romanian pilots with the tool they needed at home and on the Eastern Front. The Romanians produced a small but respectable cadre of fighter aces in their Escradilelli de Vanatuare, or hunting squadrons. The FAWR would count 48 aces among her number by the end of the war, 17 of which had 10 or more kills. Alexandru Serbanescu ranked highest with 47 victories. When the warning sounded from their radar stations, the Germans, Romanians, and Bulgarians leapt into their mounts and took to the skies. And Romania had the advantage of early warning and could position themselves for the attack the moment B-24s came over the Croatian coastline. Even flying low, the B-24 raids of 1942 had encountered fierce resistance. Flying at altitude, there was no way to miss an incoming raid. By 1944, the Romanian supply of ammunition, machine guns, cannon, and better quality engines had made a significant difference from where they were in 1942, and the Allies would soon find that out. The American crews, in fact, often mistook the IAR-80 series for FW-190s, and they mistook the Romanians for Germans. Neither the Allies nor the Germans had had much confidence in the Royal Romanian Air Force, but it was their pilots and their planes that were taking down the B-24s and P-38s, and eventually they would only be outclassed by the P-51 Mustang, the Mustang entering service later in 1944. King Michael's coup against Ion Antonescu's government on 23rd of August 1944 put the king back in charge of his kingdom. King Michael had been a figurehead under Ion Antonescu's regime, a fascist government that leaned heavily towards National Socialism. Now it was Michael's Romania. Unfortunately, this meant dealing with the tyrannical, regicidal dragon banging through the door, the Soviet Union. An immediate ceasefire with the Soviets backfired, and that led to over 130,000 Romanians being shipped off to camps in the USSR, prisoners of a war they had just agreed to end. Thousands would not return. On 12 September, an armistice with the Soviet Union and the Allies would be signed, effectively changing Romania to the Allied side. She would even fight against the Germans for months. Most of her forces were under Bolshevik control. Romania would not see an air force again until 15th of February 1949. King Michael, likewise, was handed into the wolf's lair and he would be forced to soon abdicate and flee to the United Kingdom. He would not see his homeland again until after the fall of one of the most dangerous, corrupt, and deadly communist regimes of all time.